Okay, I just want to talk about Red Ribbon. Red Ribbon is basically a confirmation of documents that they have in the Philippines and other countries ask for it. Um, for example, your birth certificates, your um, marriage license, all those sort of things. Um, now, for us, we needed to get it done in the Philippines because it's got to be within three months. The reason it's got to be within three months uh, for immigration, etc., is because of divorces and things like that that could happen over a period of time. So that's why they want it within a three month period because they want confirmation you're still married, etc. at that time. Because obviously it's not just marriage, it's deaths and everything else. So they want the documentation to be within three months of processing. Now to process it, um, it's for us it's gotta be done by, I think it's a DFA in Manila. Um, so. There's two ways to do it is you basically get your family member to go there because they've got to know you family wise or the other way is you have to get it um, stamped and an official letter sent from the consulate of the country you're in. So basically what's happened here is yesterday we drove all the way to Valencia um, which is about 450 kilometers round trip uh, to go and see the Spanish uh, the Philippines consulate, uh, they hold a small office in Valencia because uh, obviously they've got a consulate there, but they've got a um, embassy in Madrid just for the, you know, if you have to go through the same thing. Um, going there, we recommend preparing a letter um, because they may not have something officially set up for this because uh, often consulates are like out in far-flung places that may not have all the administrative support. So preparing the letter, uh, even having a hard copy and having a electronic copy is ideal because they can alter the electronic one to suit their terminology or what they deem should be on there. Just make the job easy for them. Um, it costs 22 euros 50 and 9 euros express free. Um, I'll leave that why there's two different prices, etc. Leave that to one side. Um, but <coughs> so it's cost me roughly 32 euros and 50 cents. I think it was 32.50. Um, for a letter to be written by the consulate, rubber stamped, and all it's basically saying is confirming that my wife is my wife and they recognize her, blah, blah, blah. That is then put in an envelope. Cross the road to DHL. DHL costs 65 euros to send it there to get it there by Wednesday. Um, so that that was a bit of a bit of a uh, surprise shock. 65 euros for a single letter, but uh, not like you do about it. And these are the sort of things you have to do um, just to get all the documentation right. So now that goes to the a friend of ours in Manila who's got the other documentation, the birth certificates, marriage certificates, etc. I'm uh, going to go to, I think it's the DFA. They will then confirm it, stamp it, and then that goes to the Spanish Embassy for confirmation that they recognize it. And then it's red ribbons. And then it comes back to um, Spain. And then we can then go to Alicante and process the documents. Um, there is no short way of doing this sort of stuff and even with the, um, the UK there's an odd request for a letter of recognition of the marriage that simply doesn't exist. Um, the, I think the embassy charged about 240, letter, 240 euros for a letter of non-existence um, because basically they don't recognize the marriage in the Philippines. It's, it's some whatever setup it is, but Spain wants it. But at the same time, it's not a legal requirement. So you don't need it, but they will like it. And now I'm like, 240 euros? Why? You know, but we're already here. We're already settled. Doesn't really matter. If they go there and they say they want it, I'm going to put it to solve it. Solve it is like a um, governing body type thing that will intermediate about these issues because um, often people will ask for things that they don't really need um, and have no right to ask for in some cases. So that's something we're dealing with. Um, I'm expecting them to ask for it and we're just going to go, no, 
you, you don't need it, it's not part of the requirements, it's not needed, blah, blah, blah. And another important note here, as, as I'm a resident in Spain and a member of the EU, my family are not protected in Spain anyway. Um, because as long as I'm here, they are here. As simple as that. They're, they're protected by my rights within Europe. Um, but I want to wrap all this up because we need to get back to the Philippines because we've got some family uh, emergencies there. Um, but also, once it's done, it's done. April and the kids can become Spanish citizens and that's our foothold in Europe. And that's basically why all this bit in Spain is so important because once that's done, I can sit back, you know, because at the end of the day, April can work. And I'm not, this is the thing in Spain. April's income on her own is enough to sustain us here. So anything I earn I will be going in savings um, because I want to be in, out of this working role uh, within the next eight to ten years. I want to be finished working. I don't want to work anymore. <laughs> <coughs> I want to do stuff I like doing and doing it full time. Um, it's like my dad, he's off doing photography most of the time. But we're getting there and they, this this is an important bit and we're almost over the final hurdle for Spain. But I wanted to talk about the Red Ribbon because I know some people assume it's, you just go there and take that. And that's, yeah, they're going to, oh, what do you mean it's got to be Red Ribbon? Oh. <laughs> Thanks for watching.